God of our lives, we give thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his love of our country and for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning and welcome on this Sunday to our Live at 10 service. A service that combines Easter hope, for that is the season we are in, with just a few touch points with the loss of His Royal Highness the Prince Philip. Just to say that this Friday, uh, our reader Deb will be leading a commemorative service on Facebook at 6 p.m. And the order of service will be out in various places through the week. To also say um, that Holy Communion services in All Saints and St. James Church start again next Sunday. And uh, those will be at 12 p.m. at All Saints and 3 p.m. at St. James. And you'll need to register to pre-book with the parish office. Um, and if you could do that by close of play on Wednesday this week, uh, that will give time to let people know they have space. You can join after this service for a gathering over Zoom to catch up with one another to see how we're all doing um, and if you need the details and pop a comment in the uh, feed here on the Catherington and Clanfield Facebook page I will get those to you and there will be the opportunity for you to add your prayers into the sort of prayers of the morning via the comments box on the Catherington and Clanfield Facebook page so if you want to do that through the course of the service please do. If you're praying for a specific situation and you want to include the name of the individual involved, then please make sure you have their permission to share it publicly. And as we worship, please join in the words in yellow if that helps you this morning. But we start with words of celebration and Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us the light to the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And our special prayer, the Easter collect. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope. For a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the assurance of that hope, let's come just to acknowledge that sometimes we get things wrong. To say sorry and to receive forgiveness. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. 
Lord, hear us and help us. Let's use these words to receive and accept that forgiveness that Jesus has brought for us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in light of that amazing forgiveness, to share words of peace with each other, after which there will be an Easter hymn, The Strife is O'er, reminding us that Jesus broke the power of death that first Easter. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Now let us share words of resurrection praise, recalling the presence of Jesus amongst his disciples in those days following Easter. Our Lord Jesus Christ, risen from death, we praise you for changed lives and new hopes at Easter. You come to Mary in the garden and turn her tears into joy. For your love and mercy we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. You come to the disciples in the upper room and turn their fear into courage. For your love and mercy we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. You come to the disciples by the lakeside and turn their failure into faith. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. You come to the disciples on the Emmaus Road and turn their despair into hope. For your love and mercy we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. You come to your people now and turn our weakness into triumph. For your love and mercy we give you thanks. We praise your holy name. 
And now we turn to the Bible for a reading from the book of Acts, followed by the hymn Amazing Grace. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Let's pray. Father God, will you take these words and by your Spirit fill them with life as we think on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 
with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all words from that short reading from Acts a little while ago the context of that reading it's a few days after Pentecost the Holy Spirit has fallen on the believers there and Many have been added to their number. Peter has healed a crippled beggar in the name of Jesus. Peter and John have been pulled up before the council. And at least some of those were the same people who condemned Jesus and handed him over to Pilate. And the council have sat bemused and unable to do anything. The believers have met regularly at the temple. And have prayed for boldness, a group of them had the house shaken by the power of God and in that reading we see a way of living things in common and the like and thinking about it it says the whole number of believers so there were at least round about 5,000 people living this way in this grace in Jerusalem at that time and what a key word that is grace this great grace that was upon them all. I don't know about you, but I need grace. Day by day, every day, buckets and buckets of grace. To my mind, faith is lived out in grace. And without it, I can do nothing. What does that grace look like? Well, our Bible reading talks about the outworking of this great grace. It talks of the believers being in, being one in heart and soul, being in absolute unity, one heart together, as that grace worked amongst them. It talked about, in that reading, them saying no private ownership. Now that's an interesting one these days, where we are often blessed with more than we really know that we're blessed with. But one way perhaps to think of the no private ownership is to remember that everything we have is a gift, is a blessing from God. To not treat it as, that's mine but to say, Lord, you have blessed me. What do you want to do with that blessing? And in that sense of no private ownership, we hear that there was no one needy amongst the believers as they met each other's needs, using that common sense of property to meet each other's needs, to share, to offer grace to one another to give away on behalf of those who have need. I wonder how that works out in our individual and our corporate lives. Do we willingly give to those in need? It's a challenge for for me, definitely. It's a challenge for us all, I think. Do we treat everything as a blessing, a gift from God, to hold lightly to and to give away. I would say in part that's probably what the whole parish share thing with the diocese is about, is us from our blessings giving to places who really do need that sort of love from other parts of the church. A grace that brings unity of heart and soul that brings generosity, that holds lightly to material things. This was attractive. We read in Acts that they were adding to their number all the time because people saw this and went, that is so different. And how different that sort of light holding to things, that generosity of heart and that handing away would be in the consumer material world that we live in today. Where did all of this grace come from? 
where it says the testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, the apostles sharing that strong testimony and this great grace being upon them. The testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and in that the resurrection hope shared with all. That's what gives grace in the way we read in that reading and what can bring that sort of grace into our lives. Our own resurrection hope can give rise to this sort of grace. But what if the apostles had stayed silent? What if when they met Jesus in that room in Jerusalem, they'd kept the news that Jesus was alive to themselves? What if they hadn't shared it more widely? What would have happened then? I don't think they had a choice. When they met Jesus, it was such an amazing thing that they had to share, emboldened by the Holy Spirit. But what if they hadn't? Nobody would have known. And that hope would not have grown into the amazing thing that the Christian faith is today with all the believers around the world. What if we stay silent about our faith? What then? Testimony is a key part of that reading, revealing the hope and allowing the grace that it brings to inhabit people's lives. What can we do to share that hope with our neighbours? And that hope is really important in this season, this week of mourning. Yes, so many are lost. And Prince Philip is in a sense, just another one of those, but there is a national connection to that. It's interesting hearing Archbishop John Santamu talking of Prince Philip's faith. Therein lies resurrection hope. But what do we do about this grace today? Well, I think the first thing we could do is say, Lord, give me grace. What grace do you need today? to pray, to ask the Holy Spirit to bring that grace, to fill our lives with grace and see what that brings. But alongside that, to actively be looking for needs that we can meet around us. What can we do? Material needs, yes, but just needs of presence, needs of time, needs of something. What need can I meet today? Amen. So now we come to our prayers. If you'd like to share um, something to pray for in the comments box on the Catherington and Clanfield Facebook page during this live stream worship, then please do. And we will include those um, towards the end of our prayers. But let's pray together. We pray to Jesus who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nations. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, Good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep. Recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick 
and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. A prayer for the royal family today. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn, especially the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now is an opportunity to share your prayers in the comments. Otherwise, we will just hear the words of Lord, listen to my prayer. pray for Angela's friend Miles in Australia diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Holy Spirit will you be there with healing. Have your hands on Miles' life, on his family, on his friends who surround him, on all at St Matthew's Church as they support Miles. In your mercy Lord hear our prayer. As if there isn't enough pain and grief in lives but we inflict it on each other Lord, we pray for Northern Ireland and everything that's going on there we pray for peace to be restored Lord, for people to love each other as you love each of us Amen for the friend of Marilyn's aunt who is undergoing a very serious operation today. Lord, will you be present in that operating theatre? Have your hand to guide the surgeons and the nurses and all of the staff involved with that, your protection and your healing to be present in that place.
Well, it seems at this time that there are a number of men called Jack who need a touch of you, of healing in their lives. So Lord, for those that I'm thinking of in my mind, but all, pray for your healing for Jack. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us, accept our prayers, and be with us always. Amen. And now, the 23rd Psalm, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. 
Now words of faith to share with one another. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So our time together draws to its close this morning. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. He is not here, he is risen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And our service ends with the hymn, Love's Redeeming Work is Done. Another reminder of our Easter resurrection hope. And then a final moment marking the passing of Prince Philip. God bless you all. Amen.